Thank you. I'd like to talk to you about a project we did with the Bellevue School District. And I'm going to start out by putting a little context around it. You can see the graph there. That is what a typical uh, Western Washington water utility uh, demand profile looks like. That's our water use over the year. And not surprisingly, you see the water use go up dramatic, uh, dramatically during the summertime. If we sort of isolate that and say, well, what's, what's going on there? What's causing that? Well, you know, there's some things happening. Maybe uh, uh, cooling towers at buildings are working a little more during the summertime. People are pressure washing their decks or fences, and maybe washing the dog or whatever. But most of that increase in the summertime comes from sprinkler systems, people running their sprinklers. And that in and of itself might not be such a bad thing, except we know that about half of that water in that bump is waste, just absolute waste. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, things like this and this and this and this and that, watering in the rain and so forth, watering the sidewalk and things like that. And there are two key takeaways from that. Uh, first, uh, regarding that graph, water utilities have to design and build their systems to meet that peak demand. And it doesn't matter if 70 or 80 percent of the time water use is low. They have to build everything up here. So the pumps, the pipelines, the reservoirs, all that have to be built uh, big. And the second thing is, when you look at all that, that for the most part is not reclaimed water. That is not purple pipe. That is potable water treated to the highest drinking uh, water quality standards in the world. And we spray it on the pavement and we spray it in the dirt. The second thing that I always think when I see things like that is there are a couple of billion people around the world who would give anything to have access to water like that. And that's sometimes, unfortunately, what we do with it. Uh, water utilities have been working hard, some water utilities, uh, for many years now to get a handle uh, on this problem. They have lots of programs. Um, to work with uh, irrigation companies and people who manage sprinkler systems. We tried something kind of new here in the past few years with the Bellevue School District, performing landscape and irrigation evaluations. And the basic idea is, uh, well, first of all, Bellevue School District may use up to 20 million gallons of water per year for summer landscaping. So that's not indoor water use, nothing inside the buildings, it's just watering outside. So we approached them and talked about this problem to see if we could help. And we ended up doing irrigation evaluations at 19 different schools in 2014. This was a very deep dive uh, into their irrigation systems. And the other uh, aspect of this is we got the district to dedicate their staff, two staff members, um, to work with us as we were doing the evaluations. So we didn't want to just come in from the outside and do some work and then say goodbye and walk away. We wanted to invest the staff in what we're trying to, to do. So this was a training opportunity for the staff members. They were with us whenever we were on site. And I'm just going to run through and show you a few aspects of what we did. This is an example of the report we created for them right here, this school, Chinook Middle School. And some of the components of the reports are, uh, I know you can't see this, but this is a breakdown of all of the irrigation water used by the school. I think this is Newport. Over the course of a year, you can see the zeros in the wintertime and the big numbers in the summertime. And then here for Sammamish High School, we've graphed that out where they can see that, how, uh, how much water they're using in the summertime. And then this was, this was uh, something kind of unique. We used Google Earth to put together uh, zone maps for them. Irrigation systems are broken up into different parts. We call those parts zones. And the zones uh, run uh, one at a time when the sprinklers come on. The significance of this is you see the different colors they are uh, outlining the zones. Well, that's because the plant material is different in those zones. And therefore, the water needs are different in the zones. And the problem typically comes in that the person who's running the system doesn't really know this, and he doesn't want to be the guy who kills the grass or causes problems. 
So they run everything at the same rate. So the sports fields that need a lot of water <clears throat> uh, get the same amount of water as, say, drought-tolerant landscaping. But by laying all this out for them in these zone maps, um, it's a nice tool for them to help manage their landscapes better. This, uh, again, it's a, a busy image, but this is a breakdown of the schedule that we give to them. It tells them how often to run the system, how to change it throughout the course of the year, and how to adjust for the different types of plant material. We just have uh, kind of a deep dive into the recommendations. We went into each zone and looked in, at the problems we found there, identified that in the reports, and then we sort of uh, tallied everything up at the end and gave them a breakdown of the cost to upgrade the systems, to make the recommendations that we talk about, and then the potential savings that are involved there. We did that for 19 different sites. Some of the key findings from that, <coughs> I don't need to read this, but uh, basically we found that there was you know, a lot of work that could be done there, a lot of things that could be um, improved relatively easily. Uh, this one, 85 zones, we found opportunities for replacing old sprinkler heads. There's new technology out there, new sprinkler heads that apply the water more evenly, and that would be a good thing to replace. Also, interestingly, 36 zones, we found opportunities to remove unneeded sprinkler heads. Systems are put in, in some cases, many years ago. Over time, the plants grow, they mature, and often they reach a point where they don't need any supplemental irrigation. But usually people don't ask the question. They don't say, well, do we still need to keep watering this? And that's just how it's done. We've gone out many times, actually, and found sprinkler systems watering dug firs that are 100 years old. I don't quite understand that. I do a lot of hiking, and I see trees up in the forest that there's no irrigation there, and they seem to be perfectly healthy. But lots of opportunities to just take the old sprinkler heads out, and you're done, saving a lot of water and then some good opportunities for switching over to drip irrigation. If we total up all of the potential savings from this project, we think that the district could save about 4 million gallons of water per year. That's about a 20% reduction from where they are. And, you know, I said at the beginning that 50% of the water is waste, so 20% uh, is relatively easily achievable for them. They wouldn't necessarily have to spend a ton of money to to achieve that. Uh, this is primarily a gravity-fed system here, but there is still some energy involved in the treatment and transport of water, and we calculated that out for them, as well as the avoided greenhouse gas emissions. And then finally, we showed them they could save about $40,000 per year. I assume that most schools and school districts could use an extra $40,000 a year. The current status of the project is we're, we're still working with them to help them implement the upgrades that we identified, doing lots of training with the staff. So the question I would like to pose for you is, what if we did this uh, project on this scale at uh, an additional 10 sites or 20 sites or 50 sites? Uh, what difference would that make? Well, I think we would probably see that... Uh, peak slowly come down over time. And if we can do that, then we, the water utilities, don't have to run out and spend hundreds of millions of dollars to develop even more supply for people to spray water into the dirt and on the pavement. We can keep the water up in the, in the watersheds where it belongs and live within our means. Thanks.